All right, folks, happy Saturday. Hope you're having a great weekend. We need to talk about just how much liquidity is about to be brought to the XRP ledger by Ripple. Now, we know that the DEX volume has been stagnant for the past six years, and really the lawsuit with the SEC drastically killed the amount of activity taking place on the XRP ledger. But we're finally starting to get out of it through the other side with the case concluding, utilities being added, and we're talking NFTs, AMM, EVM sidechain, a lot more coming to the XRPL, all in a decentralized way. Our AMM can't be sued, like the Uniswap AMM for Ethereum, right? There's nobody to sue for the uh, XRP Ledger AMM, right? Big difference there. Protocol level, completely decentralized. But I want to talk about and clarify uh, something I talked about yesterday, I made a video where the title was, Is XRP Needed? Because we just saw an interview with the president of Ripple, Monica Long, where she talked about where in some corridors, where you have US dollar euro, for example, you have deep liquidity already there, and it's already relatively cheap. You don't necessarily need XRP for the bridge currency role between that corridor. Here's something, though, that I wanted to make clear for everybody to understand, because a lot of people don't watch the video all the way through, right? They see the headline, they see the initial first few minutes, and then they want to just make a comment and leave, right? Oh, see, I told you XRP sucked, and then they leave. But if you watch the whole video through, I explained why XRP is needed and the advantage of on-demand liquidity, removing the need to pre-fund. But I want to be very clear about how important this is with the Ripple stablecoin real US dollar. What's happening here, you have to understand, the RLUSD, Ripple Stablecoin, is built on the XRP ledger. So technically speaking, yes, you do need XRP for every single transaction for that Ripple Stablecoin It's that, that happens on the XRP ledger, you need XRP. You're burning XRP. You're reducing the amount of XRP. It is deflationary, right? And so, yes, you do need XRP. Inherently, the stablecoin being issued on the XRP ledger means that. Now, of course, they are issuing it on Ethereum as well. I think the big reason for that is going to be the EVM sidechain and to have that interoperability between uh, basically Ethereum network and the XRPL. That EVM sidechain is bringing all the smart contract functionalities to that sidechain so that we can basically have interoperability. And so I think the move to issue it on Ethereum makes sense but they're also issuing it on the XRPL and I expect that most of the flows of liquidity will be on the XRPL. But what's important to understand here, let's be very clear. This is liquidity in US dollar terms that doesn't necessarily have to go to the XRPL, but Ripple is bringing it to the XRPL by deciding to issue their stablecoin on the XRP ledger. So what that means is once again, you need XRP, this is on the XRP ledger and every single transaction that involves this is going to be burning XRP. This is liquidity that could have been on centralized exchanges in just regular fiat corridors with institutions that didn't have anything to do with Ripple's stablecoin. Ripple didn't even have to launch this stablecoin, but they've decided to make this move. And I'm going to show you an old article that explains why they hadn't moved on-demand liquidity to the decentralized exchange built into the XRP ledger. On-demand liquidity had been running through partnerships with centralized exchanges primarily, and it was kind of this closed off market that they were creating that didn't reflect and was not impacting XRP price because the flows of liquidity weren't on our public decentralized exchange. I'm trying to make this simple for everyone to understand. These flows of liquidity were happening over here, kind of in a walled garden, we could say, with centralized exchanges. And you know, they got partners like Uphold and others that provide all sorts of liquidity, right? But the point being is that on-demand liquidity, which uses XRP, even that wasn't on public XRP ledger decks. That's now changing, and they're starting to bring that, and the Ripple stablecoin is going to be key in doing so and helping out. I'm going to show you, this is an article that came out last year from Coin Edition. And this is important because this explains exactly what the main hiccup was. Ripple CTO David Schwartz ODL can integrate with decentralized exchanges, but stable coins are holding the progress. And so this is a back and forth. And basically, David said he explained that ODL does not currently utilize the decentralized exchanges. However, he noted on uh, ongoing investigations into incorporating DEX services into ODL, potentially allowing trading against AMMs. And so he goes on here 
and he was talking about Prisma in this a little bit, which is a different product um, to, to leverage DEX liquidity and multiple exchange liquidity. That's something kind of different. But he said, while there is a concerted effort to integrate DEX usage into on-demand liquidity, it has not yet been implemented. Swartz pointed out that one crucial factor for making this integration practical is the availability of robust stablecoins in major currencies, such as stable US dollar or euro coin. He noted that currently these stablecoins are lacking, but there is hope for their development in the future. Now, this is interesting. Meanwhile, Schwartz mentioned that Ripple came close to an opportunity to integrate stablecoins on the XRP ledger two and a half years ago. However, according to him, the SEC lawsuit disrupted the opportunity. The action ultimately extinguished the headway to integrating stablecoins and DEX usage into on-demand liquidity. Nevertheless, the Ripple CTO clarified that Ripple is actively engaged in discussions with banks and larger financial institutions to encourage the launch of premium stablecoins. And now, fast forward to 2024, we know that Ripple is launching their own stablecoin, real US dollar, and they're issuing it on the XRP ledger. So yes, XRP is needed. And in the video I dropped yesterday, I just did, I forgot to mention, it's kind of obvious. It's the most obvious thing, really, and that's probably why I forgot to mention, I was talking about some other things, but the stablecoins issued on the XRP ledger, which means that you do need XRP. And in the interview that Monica Long just gave us, she added that, the stablecoin is going to be, um, you know, additive and complementary to XRP. Once again, it's bringing liquidity that otherwise wouldn't be on the XRP ledger, and it's bringing it to the XRP ledger. This is what we have been wanting this whole time: is for Ripple to bring, you know, big flows of liquidity to the XRP ledger. It is happening. It is happening right now. And it would have happened years ago if it wasn't for the SEC lawsuit. Fast forward to 2024, we're still in the middle of this lawsuit waiting for the final ruling from Judge Torres, and Ripple's already leaning into the stablecoin, already putting the pedal to the metal, and they're about to make huge headways with their own stablecoin. And as I've been saying, we need, and as David said in that interview a year ago, we need legitimate issuers bringing real-world assets to the XRP ledger, tokenized gold, silver, US dollars, Euro dollars, who's going to tokenize the Japanese yen, SBI holdings, maybe good option. I've long speculated that who's going to tokenize the Euro. There already has been people that have tokenized gold on the XRP ledger. Uh, look at Ascension, right? Part of the Reaper, uh, you know, companies, Adam Industries, uh, you know, go look at uh, GateHub, right? Has issued Bitstamp is issued US dollars and euros. There's already been these currencies issued on the XRP ledger, but it's not just a matter of issuing it, it's bringing the liquidity as well. Somebody could tokenize a little bit of gold on the XRP ledger. It's not gonna have a huge impact on price unless we get you know, a lot of gold and a fluid liquid market where trading is happening. That's where we impact price because in every single transaction, you're burning XRP and you're destroying XRP forever, deflating the circulating supply of XRP. It brings me to one final point that I want to make, which gives Ripple a competitive advantage in the stablecoin space, is that they have their own custodian, so they don't need to pay anybody to be the custodian. They don't need to have any banking relationship to hold the collateral, their cash, their treasuries that they're going to back their stablecoin with. They have standard custody and trust, a trust in New York with a New York license from the New York Department of Financial Services. They are good to go now. That acquisition was massive. So now they get to hold the collateral. They're holding cash, a lot of cash. They're going to be holding T-bills, right? And managing the treasuries is not you know, necessarily an easy task. Look at all of the banks in the United States with over $500 billion of unrealized losses on their bonds. How's that program working out? But this is where the competitive advantage for Ripple comes in is because they can back their U.S. dollar by XRP. And so maybe I'll title this video uh, US, Ripple's US dollar backed by XRP because that's what this is. The potential for Ripple to say, hey guys, we're going to take a billion XRP and we're going to throw it over here in the standard custody and trust and that's going to be part of our collateral that we're going to hold to back our US dollar. And maybe this is a stretch. Maybe they don't have to go that far. I'm just saying it could give them a competitive advantage versus a circle which only has cash and treasuries to back their dollar what does tether have to back theirs well 
I'll let you guys speculate on that. We've talked plenty about Tether and what they don't, what what they do and don't have. And we're still waiting for a legitimate third party audit on Tether reserves. Will we ever get it? Man, eh, probably not, unless the courts finally force it. But once again, what can Ripple provide? Industry leading transparency, stability brought by backing their dollar by treasuries and cash. But then they also have the competitive advantage of having XRP at no cost basis, and they have it in the escrow. And it wouldn't be hard for them to just say, hey, you know, we're taking a billion XRP here and we're, we're going to put it in standard custody and trust so that we can back our US dollar by XRP, which gives them multiple options and insurance against the US dollar, against treasuries, because the treasury market's always moving, the interest rate's always moving. And so this is where unrealized losses come in on those securities. So, you know, if you if people think that, oh, treasury is a guaranteed payment of 5%. Well, yeah, but the interest rates on these can change. And so once again, all these banks that had bonds had given out debt at, you know, 1%, 2%, 3%. And now the interest rates are at six, seven, eight, nine, 10%. Though that, that, that arbitrage there is all losses for them. This is why they're happy to refinance your home right now and move you into an interest rate of seven or eight percent because you were locked in at three and so of course they're trying to find as many people as they can to come to the table and do that deal not many people are not many people can afford to right and it's not it's not smart in most cases right if you are locked in at a three percent you probably shouldn't roll it over into a seven percent now for the bonds we're watching the banks right now they're able to offload and then renew and and fill back up their balance sheet with new bonds that are paying the four percent five percent that the short-term t-bills are paying and what's the tenure at four and a quarter or whatever it is these were at you know half a percent one percent and so now we're going through the renewal process but once again to reiterate the point Yes, XRP is absolutely needed and XRP gives the competitive advantage for those who are going to adopt it, for those who are going to hold it on their balance sheet. And as we see, the more liquidity that gets brought to the XRP ledger, the more positive impact we're going to have on price of XRP. So yes, the stablecoin from Ripple is going to be complementary, it's going to be additive, and it's going to bring a whole lot of liquidity that otherwise Ripple could have kept outside of the XRP ledger. It's now all being brought in. And the most recent number that we got from Ripple is that they've settled about 60 billion in payments since their inception of the company. Not all of that is XRP. But once again, the flows of liquidity that were just traditional US dollar flows are now going to be brought to the XRP ledger because Ripple's issuing this stablecoin on the XRPL. I hope that that provides clarity. Drop a comment down below and let me know what you guys think about this whole situation. Is XRP needed or not? I think that I've made the case pretty clear that yes, it is. And it's going to give the competitive advantage. But you guys let me know in the comments down below but what you guys think about that one. And I hope that everybody has a blessed weekend. If you appreciate our updates, please make sure you like this video, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our updates. And if you're looking to get tapped in with our private community, I just got done with a two hour Discord weekly live call. We have them every single Saturday at 1130 a.m. Eastern. And we just got done having a conversation that covered everything for the last two hours. It was an absolute pleasure. I love our community. Staying focused, staying strong. And uh, the vision has gotten more clear as we've now had the group now for three years. We'd love to have you in the family. That's at ZachRector.com, along with all of my other community resources. I greatly appreciate your support, and I will see you guys in the next one. Stay blessed. I am your host, Zach Rector. I really appreciate all of the love and support. If you want to support the channel, just remember that you can start by smashing that thumbs up for me, sharing this content far and wide, and everything else is at my website.